Hey there drone fans, Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's clip, I'd like to review the RODELINK wireless microphone system from Rode. But before I get too deep into the review, let me explain that they make two versions of this kit. The one in front of me is called the Filmmaker Kit, and it includes all the components on the table. They make a second version called a New Shooter Kit, which has a slightly different mix of components, but the fundamental architecture behind it and the electronics are exactly the same. So whatever I talk about in this kit will apply to that other kit. And really the big difference between it comes down to the transmitter. So in the Filmmaker Kit that I've got here, you get a belt mounted transmitter or belt clip transmitter that has a three and a half millimeter locking collar, connection for your audio input, and you can use that with a handheld microphone and plug the cable in here, again, three and a half millimeters, or you can use it with a lavalier microphone and plug it in there, and I like that versatility, because I can use it on the floor at a convention when I've got a microphone to talk to somebody, or if I'm sitting at a desk or a table interviewing somebody, I can use the lav mics. If you go with the new shooter kit, this transmitter is shrunk down into a small cube that you basically plug into the bottom of a handheld microphone through the XLR connection, and then that becomes a wireless microphone solution that you can use with the receiver. But again, the underlying architecture is the same. And I think if you buy this kit, you can actually add that transmitter to the kit and then have both the pack that you can use on your hip or use that other uh, wireless microphone attachment. But anyway, the electronics are the same. So I thought I'd break the clip into a couple of different sections. This first section, I'm going to do kind of a mini unboxing. I've already taken it out of the box, so there's no drama there. You'll see everything that's in there. But I like to know before I buy something, pretty much everything that comes with the kit and sort of how they work together. So this first section, I'll do a, a brief overview of what the components are and how they plug together and that type of thing. Then the second section, I'll give you some close-ups of how to turn it on, how to pair it, where all the controls and buttons and knobs are. And that's a really good section that'll allow you to skip reading these two manuals because if you're like me and you want to get using the thing pretty quickly, you don't want to sit down and pour through the manuals. I'll do that later. So that section will help you understand that. The third section is sort of a test. Now, one thing about wireless systems that's driven me mad over the years, and I've used a lot of different systems from companies that were wireless, it seems like the marketing for the companies tend to get out out ahead of the electronics. And what I mean by that is they'll make these outrageous claims about the quality of the audio and the distance you can transmit these things. And I don't know, when I test them, maybe they're testing it like in the zero gravity of outer space or something. But when I test it in real world environments, I never get the distance or the clarity that I want based on what they tell me I can get. So I thought, let me take this thing out into an open football field and really test it to see how far I can get without losing audio. So that'll be the third part. And then the last part of it, I'll go through sort of the pros and cons of what I think this kit provides. Now, I have to be honest, I'm in love with this technology. Rode is a company where I use a lot of their different gear. I use a ton of their microphones and other audio gear from them. I've been using this thing for quite some time and it has been flawless for me. I've used it in very noisy environments, on, on show floors where I've gone to conventions. I've used it in environments with a lot of electrical noise because I went to the NAB conference a while back. I was using it there. You probably could not find a conference where there was more digital stuff plugged in. So if there was gonna be interference it would have happened at that conference, rock solid performance. And it just, plug it in, turn it on, and it works. So I just love that about it. The other thing I'll tell you is that these wireless systems really range in price from inexpensive, kind of Bluetooth based stuff that doesn't work that well through this type of technology up to really expensive systems that you can put multiple microphones on with a mixing console. And those work phenomenally well, but they're so expensive and I'm on a budget. And if I take that kind of expensive technology out into the field, Every time I clip it to somebody's belt, I'm worrying he's going to bump into something or she's going to drop it or, or my gosh, I got to replace that technology. So something like this in the middle of the pack that's nowhere near as expensive as some of those insanely priced products and really does the job is exactly what I'm looking for. Not that I want to replace it often, but if heaven forbid something happens to it, it's not going to break the bank to replace it. So it's not the cheapest one out there, but it's certainly not up in the stratosphere of some of those high-end systems. So I like that about it. I also found it to be incredibly durable. I've taken this thing out, banged it around, dropped it. I've gotten it wet, not soaked, but you know, drenched out in the storm. And it works great. I take it home, dry it off, and it's ready to go. So it's simple, it's functional, and it's durable. And I like that about any product I use. So I'll go through that in a second. So what you get with the kit, again, nice box, really good packaging. I'm not going to open it up, but you guys, when you see it, you can look at it on the website. But basically what you get inside there is a transmitter, you get a receiver, you get two manuals. These are quick start guides that explain what the receiver does, what the transmitter does. You get a nice lavalier microphone. I can't say enough about this microphone. Most of these kits that I bought that include a lav mic, include like the cheapest lav mic you can use, knowing you're gonna replace it later on. It's almost like they throw it in the kit just to complete the kit. 
This lav mic is fantastic. And I've used it with the kit. I've used it directly uh, on cameras and it is, it's astoundingly good. I mean, it's, I can't believe they included it with the kit. It's that good. So again, I'll, I'll gush about that. Uh, this comes with a cold shoe mount on the bottom. This is the receiver. So typically this is mounted on your camera and you spin it down and then you make a short connection from here. I don't have the cable here, but you make a short connection from here to the camera and that's included as well. I should have probably put that out. But anyway, it's a little coil cable. I'll show you when I do the close-ups. And you have another cold shoe mount here if you want to use it. Now, that can mount on the bottom of the transmitter. You already have one on the receiver. I guess if it breaks, you've got a spare. But there are two little knobs down here that pop out, and you can mount that cold shoe mount on here if you decide you want to mount this on a tripod or something, you know, near where you're broadcasting. And they also include a nice little bag that's used for handling all the accessories. So I typically keep the lav mic in there and pop it in my kit, and then it's protected. It's not going to get banged up. So that's pretty much everything that comes in the kit. Now, I want to spend a few minutes next talking about how these components work together and show you just how easy this system is to use. This is a drop-dead simple system to use. A lot of the more sophisticated systems that I've used over the years, you have to pick a frequency, you have to match the frequency, and then you're locked into one frequency and you're stuck at that frequency. If something comes along and gets noisy in that band, you're going to have dropouts. This system is based on the 2.4 gigahertz band, the ISM band or the Wi-Fi band, but it's a smart system. And what I mean by that is when you first boot this thing up, it's gonna look for the perfect frequency to make the connection that's rock solid in the environment you're sitting in, and it's gonna latch onto that frequency, but it can also frequency hop. So if it's connected to you through this digital connection over the ISM band and it gets noisy or there's interference that's cropping up, it'll find another band and actually frequency hip to that, ship to that second band to make sure that your connection is rock solid. It does uh, 2.4 gigahertz. It's 128-bit encryption over the audio, and the audio is 24-bit, 44.1 kilohertz digital audio. These things just work phenomenal, and you'll see it in the test. When I'm walking away from it, the audio quality at the camera versus where it is downfield is, in my ear anyway, exactly the same. So not that you need to walk 50 meters away from a camera you're recording something, but a lot of times if you're at a convention and you're running to catch somebody, maybe your cameraman's catching up with you, so you definitely have some, some distance you can have between the camera and your system and still record that. So it's a fantastic system. So stay tuned and I'll give you the close-ups next. The Roadlink Wireless Filmmaker Kit provides a group of components that include the transmitter, the receiver, a lavalier microphone, a nice storage pouch for your lavalier microphone to protect it during transport, a couple of quick start guides, there's a cold shoe mount that can be used with the transmitter if you decide you don't want to use the belt clip and you'd like to mount this on a tripod, and you also get a short connection cable that allows you to make the connection between your receiver and your camera. Now I'm going to talk about all these components individually, so let me get some of these out of the way so I can show you what the other components do. So we'll start with the transmitter. A transmitter is actually a belt clip transmitter, and it's got a really heavy duty belt clip on there, and that's what I use when I'm out in the field. It goes on real easy, it's a very secure connection. If you decide you want to mount this thing on a tripod like I mentioned a minute ago, you can pop either one of these buttons out and use that cold shoe mount on either one of these positions depending on what your mounting looks like. On the side, you've got a micro USB connection that's used to provide external power to this unit, and that can be any external power source that ends in a micro USB connection. You can also use internal batteries. I'll show you those in a minute. But what's nice about this is the unit's smart enough to know that if I have an external power source connected, it's going to use that first. When I disconnect that or run out of power here, it'll immediately switch to the internal battery. So it's great because it provides a bit of redundancy between those two different power sources. On the front, you've got a three and a half millimeter jack here where the lavalier mic connects. And if you look close, you'll see there are threads on there. So this is a locking connection. And when I tighten that up, that provides that extra security that it's not going to pull out inadvertently. Now, I've had situations where I'm using a wired mic or I've got a lavalier mic on and I've got a tight connection and I reach for something and I may, again, accidentally pull that out and lose the audio. So having that locking connection really ensures that's not going to happen. Next to that, you've got a power button. Then there's an OLED display over here that'll show you what channel you're on and a little bit more information about what's going on with this transmitter. On the bottom, there's a button here to reveal the inside. When you pull that down, you can see it's got two AA batteries in there, and you can use standard batteries, you can use alkalines, NICADs, whatever works for you. Up top, you've got a three-position switch for adjustment of the gain. Now, this is kind of cool because it allows you at the transmitter end to boost the audio by 10 dB or 20 dB. So if you're using an older camera, a lot of the old DSLRs had really bad preamps on them and you'd have to actually use like an external mixer to boost that audio. This does it internally inside the unit to give you 10 dB or 20 dB of additional audio power coming out of this. So it allows you to make that adjustment for whatever camera you happen to be using. 
there's a sync button here that you won't have to mess with unless you change the transmitter channel. So if the receiver is the one that decides what channel you're on, if you change that channel on the receiver, you'll have to hit that button, hit that button over on the receiver to actually sync those two guys up. For me, I just normally let it boot. It'll find its own channel, and I've never had a problem with it. These two marks right here are the internal antennas. You've got a dual set of antennas that are at 90 degree or perpendicular angles with each other to provide a full 360 degree coverage. Let's take a look at the receiver. So again, same form factor, just about the same size. On this one, you've got a cold shoe mount, which is perfect for your camera because it slides into a cold shoe. You can tighten that down and you're good to go. If you decide you'd rather use the belt clip, like if you've got an audio person with you and you want to take this off, it's got a belt clip included as well. On the side, you've got the same micro USB connection that allows you to connect up external power to it. You've got a connection here for the cable that goes between the receiver and your camera. And again, it's got a locking collar on it as well. Standard three and a half millimeter on the other end. And it's long enough to reach pretty much any audio connection on the camera. On the front, you've got a different grouping of buttons. You've got a channel selector here, which is what you dial up a different channel if you decided not to use the one it picks. You've got a mute button here that's got a couple of different functions and I'll go through that in a minute. That's the power button, and you've got a larger display that gives you a little bit more information about what's going on. Inside the unit, you've got the same AA batteries, and again, you can use external power or the internal batteries. And up here, you've got a three position switch, which is kind of the opposite of the transmitter because it's an attenuation switch, which means you can knock down the audio by 10 dB or 20 dB. Now, what I like so much about those two adjustments are that between the two, I can crank it up a lot over here, or I can leave it at zero and dial it down over here. So some combination of those two adjustments pretty much allow me to adjust the audio perfectly for any camera I'm using and not have to use an external preamp. So you'll have to mess around a little bit with that, but once you set it up with your camera, you'll pretty much have it locked in. Now to use these units, I'd mentioned before, it couldn't be simpler. You basically just power them up. So let me power up the transmitter real quick. Hold the button down. You'll see the lights start blinking. It's picking a channel. You do the same on the receiver. Receiver is going to take a minute. It's now looking for the transmitter. It's on channel one. It's negotiating the actual frequency it's going to broadcast on. When it finds it, the display will light up like that, and you'll see the power on the receiver and the power on the transmitter. That's great from the camera side because you can know how much power is left in the batteries in these two units. If I had a microphone connected up here, you'd see this middle one bouncing a little bit. That's kind of an audio indicator. I don't necessarily use that or trust that. I really like to use a headphone on the camera, or at least use the audio metering on the camera because really what I care about is how much audio is getting to the camera. So I'd like to look on the camera to see that. This is what you'd use to change the channels if you want to go to a different channel. But for me, again, I boot these things up and I leave it on whatever channel it decides to settle on because it's smart enough to figure that out. If you look, you've seen both those displays dim out. After a couple seconds, it'll do that to actually conserve power. This bottom button is a mute button. Now you have a couple of different mute options you can do. So on the transmitter, I can mute this. So if I'm in the field and I'm doing an interview and I want to have some quiet time or I'm not recording something between the interviews, I can hit that. That'll turn red. Now I've muted that, which means there's no audio being transmitted back. You'll notice that on the receiver, it also turned red. So now I know at the camera and then I'm muted. I can unmute it again by holding it for a couple of seconds and it goes off. I also can mute that from the, from the receiver end. If I hold this down, I can actually mute it. So now they're both muted and I can unmute it from here as well. Another hidden feature that a lot of people haven't discovered yet is a mute lock. Now, a lot of times when you're in the field and if I'm on the camera end and I've got somebody on the transmitter end, this is pretty easy to hit and they can inadvertently mute the transmitter when they're in the middle of an interview just by bumping that. So I'd love to have a way to lock that button from this end so that no matter what they did to it, it wouldn't matter. And you can do that by holding this down for, I think it's about five seconds. So if I hold that down, it's now in mute lock. And you can tell that, I don't know if you can see it or not, but on this, you've got the channel indicator, there's a dot next to it, which means you're in mute lock mode. So nothing I do on this end will mute it. I can't mute it. So I basically have taken away the ability to mute this on the remote end. To undo that, you'll hold this down again for a couple of seconds and you'll see the dot disappears. And now I give them the function back to be able to mute that. So kind of a cool feature and it's a little bit hidden. A lot of people don't know about it, but I do use it a lot because there are cases in the field where people are broadcasting and they'll reach down and bump it or they'll hit it, you know, and, and mute the thing out and then I lose audio. So I like the fact that I can lock that, that mute button out so they can't actually mess with it. And that's pretty much it. Uh, the only other thing would be if you need to change channels, you'll power this guy off, you'll power up the receiver, you'll pick the channel you want to be on, and then you'll power up this unit and you'll hit both sync buttons underneath. They'll find each other and bind. Again, for me, I just let it pick its own channel because it seems to do a better job than I can. So that's pretty much it for this. Hang on and we'll get into the next section.
Here I am at my local high school football field to test out the Roadlink wireless microphone system. Now the setup is pretty simple. I've got the camera on the goal line in this end of the field. I've got the receiver for the system on top of the camera plugged into the microphone input. I've got the transmitter on my hip over here with the lavalier clip-on microphone on my shirt that comes with the system with the dead cat to knock down some of the background noise. It's kind of a windy day so it would be kind of noisy if I didn't have that on there. Now the plan is for me to run down the field Actually, I'm not going to run down the field. I'm middle-aged and it's 85, so I'll briskly walk down the field to the far end and I'll call out different yardages so you kind of know how the microphone quality is as I go down. Now, I know that seems incredibly boring to watch me go down, and my temptation was to fast forward through it so you didn't have to go through that painful exercise, but I thought about it, and the problem with that is you're not going to know if there are dropouts somewhere along the way. So you're going to have to watch me kind of lumber down the field. I'll try to do it as quickly as I can, but I thought to keep you interested, I would tell you a riddle, and I'll give you the riddle now, and then as I go down the field, I'll stop occasionally and tell you what wrong answers you've probably guessed already. So that's the experiment for today. All right, so here's the riddle. Oh, and by the way, if you know the answer to this or you figure it out or you watch the video, please don't put it in the comments because other people will probably watch it and want to solve it themselves. All right, so the riddle. A farmer has 26 sheep, one dies. How many does he have left? Good luck. All right, so we're moving downfield. I was on the 10-yard line. Now I'm on the 20-yard line making pretty good pace here. Man, what a beautiful day. Should have brought my quad along to fly. All right, I'm on the 30-yard line. Here we are on the 40 yard line. So let me spin around and talk a little bit. So your first guess would have probably been 25, which makes a lot of sense when you think about it, but you'd be wrong. Here we go. Coming up on the 50. So we're midfield and I'm betting that the audio is just as good as it was when I was standing 10 yards away from that camera. 60 yards away. I may have to run these last 20 just to show I can do it. All right, here I am at the 30 yard line of the opposition. So I'm 50 plus 30 is 80. I'm 80 yards out. Your next answer would have probably been 26 because you're thinking there's some kind of funk in there that he's cheating or something. That'd be wrong as well. All right, so we're coming up on the goal here. I'm at 20, come up on 10. Wish I had a football to spike when I got across this goal line. Been a lot of years. Okay, I'm at the goal line. So there's a full 100 yards. Now I know it says 100 meters, so it's not exactly 100 meters. That's like 109 yards, I think. So it's a little bit further along, but I'm betting the audio quality right now in this brisk wind is just as good as it was when I was over at the camera. And I'm sure you're agreeing as well. And man, is that wind picking up. So you may be hearing a lot of background noise. All right, so back to the riddle, because you've been watching this whole time, you're probably curious. So I said, a farmer has 26 sheep, one dies, how many has he got left? The correct answer is 19. And you're thinking, how can that be? Well, when I said 26 sheep, you assumed I said 26 sheep. What I actually said was 26 sheep, ill sheep. So you had 21 died, you have 19. I know it stinks when you hear the answer, but that's really a great riddle. So if you haven't heard that riddle before and you've got friends trying on them, I'm gonna bet you 99 out of 100 are not gonna get that and they're gonna be really upset when you tell them the answer. So anyway, that's it for today. Let's get back to the studio and we'll wrap up the clip. You don't have to watch me walk all the way back. Probably speed this part up. In this section, I wanted to review the pros and the cons of the product. Whenever I watch a review, I'm always hoping the person doing the review will give me some insight into their experience with the product and what they liked about it, what they didn't like about it, but more importantly, what sets the product apart from other products in that category, especially at that price range. Because if I'm gonna spend my hard-earned money on a product like this, I really wanna know what innovative features or what technology separates this from the pack so that it becomes a better value for me than some other things that I'm considering. So what I'm gonna to try to do is give you my impressions of the product after using it for a couple of months. And I've used this thing in a wide variety of environments. I've used it outside in very adverse conditions that were noisy. I've used it in the rain. I've used it indoors at conventions on trade show floors where there's a lot of background noise and there's a lot of electronic noise from all the electronics that are plugged in in those places. And this thing has been fantastic for me. I've not had it fail me once out there in the field. So you can tell that I'm a fan of it already, but I wanna give you some other things that separate it from products in its category that really make it an even better value 
beyond the fact that I think for the price, you're going to have a hard time finding a product that even comes close to this. So the first thing I want to talk about is the power for the unit. Now, every wireless system out there drinks electricity. So when you put batteries in these things, they're going to gobble it up pretty quickly. So I can use regular batteries. I can use NICADs. That's great. But I love the fact that they gave me two micro USB connections on the side that allow me to power it from an external source, whether that be a wall charger with a micro USB cable, or it be some type of portable battery bank, which I always carry a couple of them with me fully charged so that if I'm out in the field and I need to record for a long period of time and I know the batteries are getting low, I can plug it into one of those battery banks and I can record for hours. Now, even some of the more sophisticated systems don't provide that type of versatility and they've got proprietary, you know, batteries I've got to buy from the company and charge and stuff. So this is really great because I can use inexpensive batteries, rechargeables, or an external power source. That's just a really nice touch. It means that these guys are thinking about how these products are used in the field and they're trying to be creative and innovative with their technology. The next thing I'll talk about is the pairing, which is really a pet peeve of mine. This is a drop dead simple system to use. You basically turn it on, it'll search for the quietest frequency in the area, it'll make the pairing, and it'll have a backup frequency ready. So if that particular frequency or band that it's riding on gets noisy, it'll switch to the secondary band. I love the fact that there's not a lot of programming involved. I can't tell you how many times I've been out in the field using one of the more sophisticated systems and spent 10 minutes trying to find a quiet frequency and then trying to program both the transmitter and receiver to settle on that same frequency and pair up. And I don't want to spend that wasted time out there. I, I typically want to get into an interview, get the interview done and move on to the next one. And if every time I power up that other expensive system, I've got to spend five minutes figuring out a way to pair them up. That's just waste of time for me. So Good, good on you, Road, that you made this a drop-dead simple system to pair. You basically turn it on, and it's ready to rock and roll in less than 30 seconds. So I like that a lot. Um, the, another thing that's important is that a lot of the cameras we use, especially the newer ones, um, they have pretty good preamps in them for audio, so you can plug these directly into the camera and you get pretty good gain on the, on the uh, modern cameras, the mirrorless in particular. Like I use the Sony a6500, it's got a pretty good preamp in there, but some of the older cameras, the DSLRs that are a couple of years older, have horrible preamps in them. So if you plug a standard wireless system into one of those cameras, You've got to fiddle around a lot to get the right level of audio. In a lot of cases, you've got to use a preamp. I like the fact that both in the transmitter and the receiver, there are adjustable gains. So on the transmitter, you've got the ability to boost the signal. On the receiver, you can attenuate the signal. So it gives you sort of a mini mixer in the system external to the camera to set up just exactly the right amount of audio and the right quality of audio for your cameras. And again, that's not something you find in a lot of systems. Most systems, you turn them on, whatever level of audio they fire at the camera is what you're stuck with, and you've got to try and adjust the camera, or in most cases, you've got to use a preamp to make that adjustment. So I love the fact that they give you the ability to sort of, uh, you know, adjust that externally. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is the mic. Now, if I haven't gushed enough about this lavalier mic, I'm going to gush a little bit more. This is a fantastic microphone. I've used this thing with the system and out of the system. I just can't get over how good a quality this lav mic is. Most of these systems that you buy will throw a lav mic in sort of as an afterthought. It's kind of a little kudo they give you. Oh, here's a lav mic. We'll throw it in there to complete the system. That's not the case here. This lav mic, I would almost say, is probably half the value of the system. It's just that good. So I love this thing. I really have used it a lot. I've used a lot of lav mics in my years, and this one is just fantastic. So good job on the lav mic. Um, the other thing I like too is the flexibility of the system. So for example, I have the filmmaker kit here, which includes all the stuff we talked about. I don't have a new shooter kit. So the new shooter kit is that separate transmitter that fits on the bottom of the microphone. I do a lot of sort of handheld microphone interviews and I use this just fine for it, but eliminating that cable from the microphone to the actual uh, pack that's on my hip might be something I want to do down the road because when I'm at a convention, there's a lot of people running around and I've set up a couple of feet back from the camera. So I've got that cable on the floor. People are running past, they may trip over it, we may trip over it or the person I'm interviewing. So having that ability to add that new shooter transmitter to the existing system I have just by buying that transmitter, is really a nice thing. I mean, Rode could have very easily said, no, these are different systems. We're going to electronically separate the two so that you can't use that system. You got to buy a whole nother system to do it. They didn't do that. They allow you to buy that transmitter as a separate product and incorporate it into the receiver you've already got. So again, for me, when I look at a company from an engineering perspective, those kind of decisions are made at a very fundamental level in the company. And those are all benevolent decisions, which is something you don't see from big companies. They tend to want to push as much product at you at a price point as they can. So the fact that I can buy the transmitter and use it with the stuff I already own, it's pretty cool. Then the last thing I want to talk about is that I mentioned the microphone. This <laughs> man, this microphone is unbelievably cool. And I wanted to mention it twice. It's a fantastic lavalier microphone. So those are the pros. 
the cons. Now, I had to really stretch a little bit to get a couple of cons that I could complain about with this thing because I, I love it. It's just been fantastic. Of all the wireless systems I've used, it's by far the best value. I would have paid and half as much again for the system and completely satisfied for it with it. So I think the value for the money is tremendous. If you're going to look for a wireless system, this is the one to own. Now, having said that, the three complaints I have are, what's up with this dead cat? I mean, this dead cat is gigantic. It's humongous. When you put this thing on your shirt, it's almost like a comical dead cat. Look how big that thing is. You can't not see it. So I had, to, I had to chuck that aside. It does work well, but it's gigantic. And use one of the foam dead cats. So I had to buy a couple of uh, dead foam dead cats or foam windscreens that I put on there. And they work really well. But that was one complaint I had is like, okay, maybe not every kid comes with that. And it is functional, but it's just hideous, right? So that's my first complaint. The second thing is um, the size of the transmitter and receiver are larger than a lot of the more sophisticated systems. Even the less expensive systems are smaller. Now, part of the reason they have to be big is because I mentioned before that they have an internal antenna. A lot of the higher end systems have an external antenna so they can have a smaller pack. This has an internal antenna on it, but honestly, when this is on my hip, you forget it's on there. It's not like it's this big brick on your hip and it, it hangs in there and it's fine. It's lightweight. And this one's mounted on the camera. So why do I really care that it's bigger, right? I mean, it mounts on the camera. It could be twice as big. It's not going to matter to me. It's on a tripod. So I had to pick on it a little bit because they are bigger than the other ones. That's a big difference between them. But for me, that comes out in the wash. And then the last thing I'll talk about is the cases on these are plastic. Now, I've dropped these a lot. I'm pretty rough on equipment. I drop it an awful lot because I'm always in a rush to get something done. I've dropped this hip pack probably, I don't know, 25 times in the, <laughs> in the last week. And it bounced on hard floors. It's bounced in mud. It's, it's been out in the rain. And it's plastic, but it's incredibly durable plastic. So I'm going to pick on it because it's plastic. I'd love for it to have been metal. But maybe if it was metal, it would interfere with the antenna operation. So I don't know. So those are three minor things that I'm going to pick on just so I've got something on the con list and it doesn't look like I'm on the payroll of road talking about the product. But again, I've said it several times already. For my money... This is hands down the best kit on the market for a wireless solution. You can find more sophisticated systems that'll run you two or three times the price of this, and you can find less expensive systems that'll run you half the price of this. Those aren't gonna make you happy. Those are gonna make you happy, but really hit your pocketbook. This is right in the middle, and it fits all the, the needs that I have when I'm, I'm broadcasting out in the field and trying to get wireless audio. So if you're looking for a system, do your research, but you're probably gonna settle on a system like this. I've just, I've loved it. It's been working great for me and I've not had a single problem with it. So that's all I really had for the review. Hopefully you find this stuff helpful. I've got links below where you can go look at these on a couple of vendor sites out there and you can go find some on your own if you'd like. But I always like to put the links below so you can go out there and, and do a little more research on your own. If you guys are enjoying these clips and it seems like you are because we're getting a lot of positive uh, feedback from you, I'll continue to make them. I know this is a little a lot of our wheelhouse because we normally do drone reviews but since i'm out filming a lot of conventions and a lot of trade shows i use this gear on a regular basis and i've had a lot of you ask me to expand the scope of the channel to include other electronics that are related to drones and that's what this technology is so thanks again for watching if you have any questions at all drop them in the comments below and i'll get back to you as quickly as i can i always appreciate the feedback because we're always working hard to keep you guys happy and make these clips informative and and interesting and hopefully we're doing that so again thanks an awful for watching until next time Happy flying. Mm -hmm.